Hello everyone and welcome to another Monster Hunter World video. This is the Game Economist and today I have two light bow guns support builds for fighting the behemoth. Now if you're curious why I chose light bow guns over the sword and shield, it's because, well, light bow guns, you really don't have to get very close to the monster. You can actually chill back and just shoot them from range. And then the sheath time for a light bow gun is very short. So you have plenty of time to put the light bow gun away and eat an item. The other thing I want to talk about before we jump into the builds, it's kind of like the idea of what it means to play support. First of all, you're going to need wide range level 5. Okay, so if you can't build wide range level 5, you're not going to be that good of a supporter. The next thing I really recommend is bringing the speed eating skill up to level 2 at least. You could bring it up to level 3, but I actually think that's a little inefficient. I think level 2 is already so good that you should take the third level you would have built and instead build the free meal skill. So if you're going to be playing support for your team, having free meals is going to mean you don't have to return to camp as often for more consumables. It's also going to save you on your consumables, right? So like if you play support over and over and over again, you're really going to run out of your consumables very quickly. And that's why I recommend definitely bring the free meal skill. And again, speed eating level two will allow you to get through the eating animations faster. Another. One thing you'll notice I don't bring on either build is the Mushroom Mancer skill. Mm -hmm, no, no, no. Mushroom Mancer skill, in my opinion, doesn't really contribute anything to being a healer. I mean, essentially, you just trade out using regular items for using mushrooms, but you've given up three small decorations to do that. That's expensive on any build. And the problem with that is, ask the supporter, just because you're playing support, that doesn't mean you should be doing any less damage than anyone else, do you understand? So ask the supporter, you should still be doing maximum damage to the monster, because if you're not, a lot of teams would rather just have four damaging teammates. You see, because when you don't do enough damage, you're actually prolonging the fight against the behemoth, and that just means that he gets to do more damage to you guys anyway. So it's really important, when you're playing support, that you're also one of the damaging players. Getting started, I have two builds for you guys. One build is more for casual players who don't have all the decorations. The second build is more for expert players who really do have most of the decorations, and they don't have to play as carefully because they're more practiced at the game. Starting with build number one, you'll notice that I have the Wiggler Head Alpha and Empress Van Brace's Beta. Between those two pieces of armor, you're going to get wide range to four, and then one friendship decoration will bring wide range all the way up to five. Now basically, this is going to be a sticky ammo build with the Devil's Madness. You'll be using sticky ammo level 2. What that means is you'll want to bring the correct bowgun mods. You'll also want to bring the correct radio menu setup for crafting new sticky ammo. I also recommend bringing slice ammo anyways, so that you have both the sticky and slice ammo. And yeah, you'll just chill back with the Devil's Madness, shoot the behemoth in the head, cause consistent KOs on him throughout the fight, and any time somebody is in trouble, you'll go ahead and eat a potion. The last thing I'm going to mention on build number one is I actually brought Tool Specialist up to level three. And what that means is you're going to get your gear to charge back faster. So on your build, you're going to bring the health booster and the affinity booster. And you're going to set these down all the time. Like as soon as they become available, just go ahead and set them down. And your teammates are going to be able to walk into that for more damage and also for some healing. Build number two is for players who have more of the decorations unlocked and they're ready to play a little more aggressively as well. You'll notice I have two release decorations on this build. If you can't afford those, you could probably run it without the release decorations. You're just going to do less damage if you do. What I recommend in that case is trade the release decorations out for the maximum might skill. You'll notice this is going to be a slice ammo build using the Lunastra light bowgun. Similar to the Devil's Madness, it's also going to have sleep ammo, and you're also going to be able to bring sticky ammo level 2 in order to cause KOs if you really want to. Here are the mods for the setup, and here is the item loadout for this setup.
And finally, here's my radio menu. So yeah, basically on build number two, I just used the most optimal, efficient pieces of armor. Notice I have the same support strategy where I have wide range five, speed aiming level two, and free meal. But this time I'm getting the wide range skill a lot more efficiently by building the Friendship Charm three and Empress Greaves Alpha. So if you're able to afford this, I recommend this either way. It's just an extremely, extremely efficient way to build wide range all the way up to level five. I just know not everybody has Friendship Charm level three. All right, and those are my two support builds for fighting the behemoth. Later on, I may create a video for the sword and shield because again, you can eat while that weapon is drawn. The last thing I'll say is I don't really find that the hunting horn is a very good wide range weapon, right? Like if you wanna use wide range, it's probably gonna be sword and shield or light bow gun, but the hunting horn, you're much better off building 100% damage and then just letting the natural buffs that the horn gets help your team that way. And don't really play support as the hunting horn, just play as another damage dealer. And if you and if you weren't sure why I feel that way about the hunting horn, it's kind of there's a lot of complicated reasons why. It's basically inefficient, and if you don't believe me, hunting horn is actually my second most played weapon. So I'm not gonna like stretch this video on explaining why I feel that way. You're just gonna have to trust me. Alright, well that's everything I had to say. I wanna thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time.